Welcome to For Formula One's Sake, the podcast F1 deserves. I'm Ollie Peart and this is the FF1S Preview, where we're bringing you everything you need to know about the forthcoming Monaco Grand Prix, but before that we're bringing you solutions, not problems. You, our gentle, humble and very attractive listeners and viewers, have been throwing questions at us from afar in the wake of the Emilia Romagna Grand Prix. That was French, not Italian. And now we're going to answer them. As a reminder, you too can ask questions by commenting on our various social channels. What a an age we live in. Anyway, that's all to come. To Listener's Corner, which this week has a memorial erected nearby to remind you of the fragility of life. Oh. What does the memorial look like? It's just a big cock. Oh. <laughs> Fragile. Um, right, questions then. Um, who wants to go first? Uh, I don't mind going first. I'll start with the first question on the list, which is from Mike Oxlong. Great name. If 1990s Max Verstappen didn't die here, would we even still remember this racetrack, or would it have gone the way of Buenos Aires? Oh, yeah, I remember when they used to race there. I assume oh, he yeah. means Edden Senna. I've never heard Senna described as 1990s Max Verstappen, but it sort of works. It's quite good. Um, I... <sighs> I think Imola was around for long enough with a storied history enough to be remembered before this. Was it? Because I remember it for 1989, Gerhard Berger being in a fireball. So, you know. <laughs> it's, well, it's like I said in the last episode, it's just memorable for death or two episodes, whenever it was. It's just, it's just death. It's the murder circuit. It's what we called it on YouTube. But the other problem is um, I have a xenophobic problem with Buenos Aires because the last X that we talked about last Christmas uh, uh, was from there. Nothing so, to do with the Falklands. No, I was going to say, is it the Falklands? Well, when when we first got together, we made a joke about the Falklands and I was like, God, if it's up to me, you could have him back. And now I'm like, we are, I would, I will send in Thatcher's dead body to defend <laughs> that fucking island. <laughs> <laughs> okay, good. That goes our Argentinian listeners. I don't know if Thatcher's dead body would be a lot of good. <laughs> I mean, to be honest, the Argentinians would probably be quite happy with having their little memento proof. You know. Win-win. Yeah, everybody's Yet again, happy. I've solved, I've solved world, world, uh, world, world wars with my love life. <laughs> Next. Good. Well, that's, that's that question about Imola answered. Um, <laughs> I, I, I was disappointed. I, I like Imola to, I say to drive on. I've never driven it, but like watching cars drive on it, I like it. They get air. Shit. They do, but it is shit for racing. And I'd mm. kind of forgotten how shit it was for racing. And I think during the race, I tweeted that it's like, it's rural Monaco. Like, it's great fun to watch cars <laughs> drive around about. But the racing is terrible. Um, so <clears throat> would it still have that mystique if, if Senna and Ratzenberger hadn't had that terrible weekend? I'm not sure it would. It had been dropped for ages anyway. Hot take. I and mean, it's a sign whenever Emily comes up, all people talk about is that weekend in 94. Mm. They don't talk about anything else. Yeah, but... I fe- I, mm, go on. No, I was going to say, I feel like... Because uh, I was 14 when all that happened, and way before podcasts, you know, but turns out I, I was still a little shit with an opinion back then. Because I remember thinking after Ryan Ratzenberger died, they should definitely um, cancel the race on Sunday out of respect. And I was very adamant as a 14-year-old that the race shouldn't have gone ahead. And then when it went ahead, <clears throat> I was proved quite right. So I think we should well, just you ask weren't 14... Proven, you weren't proven right. You, I you, was. You, no, you thought it should have been done out of respect, not for the safety of the drivers. Same difference. No, it's not the same. Either you, way, you were like, out of respect, <laughs> the race should go ahead. And Senna lives. <laughs> <laughs> to be mired in a controversy to do with money laundering 20 years later. And also, it, didn't it, it had nothing to do with the track anyway, did it? It was his car, so... Well, the car was on the track... <laughs> sure, but it but it would have happened anyway. You know, like it, it, it you know, like yeah, the car would have the car would have gone wrong. Track, it probably wouldn't. Yeah, but the it, car would have gone wrong, like in, just in another place. Well, we don't know the car went wrong. We still don't really know what happened. I'm I'm just hypothesising, but it wasn't it wasn't the track, right? It's not like the track went. Oh, well, the track didn't help. The fact that there was a massive concrete wall at the edge of a very oh, well, very yeah, fast corner. There is that, yeah. but that but that was that was safety back in the day. You know, that's what they. Yeah, well, yeah, as that's as what they believed out. in. Wasn't that good? I don't know where I'm going with the argument. I just felt like I, I feel a bit aggressive. I feel like a fight. <laughs> I, I also, do you know, because like it, it's it's the Emilia Romana Grand Prix, which isn't in Emilia Romana, and it never used to 
It used to be it's the San Marino not, Grand Prix. Imola, nobody calls it the Emilia Marano Grand Prix. Yeah, but they also, can't say it, it. it used to be the San Marino Grand Prix. It's not actually in San Marino. Well, it's because San Marino is like the size of a postage stamp and doesn't have space for a track. They don't call it the San Marino Grand Prix. It should be called Italy too. Do you remember there was a there was a there was a weird time? We don't really have it anymore. I think so, for younger viewers, listeners, whatever you are. We should remember that there was a weird time in the kind of 90s and 2000s where they just didn't give a shit how they named races. Oh, yeah. Actually, well, we no, had that, the Swiss Grand Prix, which was in France. There was we had the Luxembourg European Grand, Grand Prix, which could have been anywhere. <laughs> yeah, yeah Luxembourg Europe. was a good one. The Pacific Grand Prix, which wasn't in the sea at all. But I suppose we have got the Made in Italy Grand Prix. Oh, no, I suppose it is still meant to, isn't it? <laughs> it's all. Yeah, fuck yeah it. I mean, at least they are actually in Emilia and Romagna this time. Uh, but yeah, silly. Anyway, well, point is. Uh, no, you're probably right, Mike. Max, Mike, Mike, whatever your name is. Mike. His name is Mike Oxlow. Sorry. And thanks for your question, I, Mike. I doubt that is actually his name, if I'm honest. Terry, go on, pick us a question. Um, Swayze, as in Patrick, says, How wrong is Mercedes wind tunnel and aero model? Well, very. I mean, <laughs> I. It, it's, it's fascinating, isn't it? Because. Surely, all right, I understand. This is where, and I think, right, in terms of education about Formula One mm. and the drive to survivation of Formula One, we're, we're not really let, it, they don't really let on how complicated Formula One is. They kind of say it's complicated, but they always try and simplify it for fans. Mm. And I think sometimes we don't really grasp how fucking complicated Formula One is. Cause Pretty I was complicated. Because I was reading the thing about, because one of the big troubles with wind tunnels is the floor is static and you the, the tires the tires aren't moving as they would in real life and the turbulence that you get off tires going over bumps in the road and everything is so incredibly insanely complicated <coughs> that there's actually no way of simulating it at all so they're basically all kind of they're guessing. kind of guessing yeah they're just kind of going uh, you know you're fine and then and I, I and I honestly have no understanding of how minor an error has to be to totally fuck up a season. Like I still think somewhere in Mercedes there's something like one decimal point out, and it's fucked everything. And as, they, and as soon as they find it, which is like finding a needle in a haystack, they'll have the fastest car in the world. But that's like shoulda, woulda, coulda. You know? But this is the, that, that, that's what gets me about a lot of the qualifying times is how close they are a lot of the time. Like I mean, it is so so. I was, so, thinking, so I was close. thinking this actually in qualifying this this race because I think at one point there was like point zero zero something between like the top four or the top three. Yeah, it was bonkers. Yeah, <clears throat> and you look at it on the screen and you're like, whoa, they've lost. It. And then you think about how quickly that is, like how far they've gone. It's what three, four, five kilometers around the track. Yeah, and you think about the difference between the crossing the line, and it's it's quicker than that. Yeah. Well, this is the thing. If you were That's driving between, between London and, and Birmingham, fifth. yeah, you wouldn't you wouldn't go. Oh, I got to Birmingham before you. You'd just be like, oh, we got it at the same time. We we complain <laughs> about Max Verstappen winning the whatever it is two hundred mile race by twenty seconds, but twenty seconds over two hundred <laughs> miles is not very long. Mm. Yeah. It and is also, ridiculous. It, I mean, and I feel with my DIY skills that if you gave me. If you said, right, you've got Red Bull for the weekend, but it's just you, <laughs> and here are all the parts of two cars, and you've got to put them all together, like, I don't think those two cars would be able to do the same time, because I'd, I'd definitely fuck up and miss bits. Okay, I don't think they're asking. I, I love <laughs> You may have understated it there a little bit. <laughs> I think some kind of... We could maybe simulate this challenge for you to design an F1 car, and then can't we, like, oh, oh, put no, it... I think we're just talking about in building it, aren't we? Yeah, you just could design it, it as well. No, no, no. Just, you give me all the parts on the floor. <clears throat> yeah. And I just... But like that's what I mean. Set. But why don't... Yeah, exactly. But you, why don't you build one, and then, and then we'll see if you can then put it in a, a wind tunnel and then make it go faster like change it okay. so if you're listening to this and you have an F1 car that's in pieces and, an, or, and or a wind, wind tunnel, tunnel and you, oh, you're happy for Terry to attack it with a hammer just do it on the internet like he can just design he can just draw one he's a professional drawer like he can just oh. like <laughs> He could just that's draw how they call, one. what they refer to themselves as yeah and then I, he has to work out how to, to how to tweak it to I make it go faster yeah I, th I, th I think there's a lot there's a lot of in-between stuff. I, I mean, normally I'm the one who grossly <laughs> simplifies things for humorous effect, but I think you're skipping a few steps. I don't think Adrian Newey just like draws something and then it just like drives off the page. I don't. I don't think that's. I don't think that's true. I think he literally. He literally. He walks in and he just goes. He'll do a little squiggle of the the profile of a front wing. He'll just go. Yeah, that. And, and then, then like hand a Disney it. And then cartoon, that, and it comes to life. Well, then no. <laughs> It, to him, it happens. Obviously, there's lots going on, like his little elves do all the stuff, but he just does that. Cause, yeah, oh, now there's elves. Oh, okay. <laughs> Real elves. Oh, I just leave the like, drawings. He's I just like Aero Santa. 
I just leave the drawings in the workshop overnight, and in the morning, <laughs> the elves have built the car made yeah. of. It's all made of wood for some reason. <laughs> I bet it feels like that to him. But eventually, his car becomes a real boy. And, and there was that and few seasons. And then to fuck it. Yeah. <laughs> What was that season a few years ago where the nose kept growing? So maybe there is something in that. <laughs> um, Another question answered. <laughs> I'll pick one at random. Tristan Clayton, is putting cocaine up their nose cones the only viable strategy left for Mercedes? We've just <laughs> talked about Mercedes, but anyway, we'll talk about them again. Well, it's a way to make more money, I suppose. <laughs> We've talked about drug smuggling in F1 cars before, so it's usually been in the tyres, but... The nose could work as an alternative I mean, income stream. It could be like a mass damper. A very talkative mass damper. <laughs> well, if they get caught, it'll put a mass damper on the proceedings, definitely. Yeah. I don't know why I was mean, going with that joke. I would like the idea of drug smuggling via Formula One, and I reckon it's probably already happened, especially in the 70s. I bet there was definitely... I mean, the Colombian cartels are already building submarines, so it's only a small step to uh, Formula One cars, surely. What? What? When you know, did this happen? Oh, it's been happening for a while. Every now and again, they because there's so much money in South America for the drug for the big drug cartels that they can afford to build their own submarines for smuggling, and God. they keep every now and again they find them, and they're like they're they're, they're proper submarines that they've just built. You know, cost a couple of million get quid. Them to- they're like when they're smuggling them. billions of quid of cocaine and heroin and what have you, like yeah. a couple of million quid on a submarine that probably won't get caught. Seems a good idea. I know this isn't the question, but I, for my day job, I did a documentary about cocaine a few months ago. And basically, the cocaine market in around the world is saturated. The, 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 the idea of not... Um, the idea of their any kind of anti-drug thing working is ludicrous and there's so much coke and so much money that yeah that, that's it they've, they've just the people who are smuggling have gone look we've 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 got too much money <laughs> <laughs> and whatever we do we just keep sending stuff yeah it's uh what about them setting up their own f1 team then well that, this is the, the next logical step i think yeah maybe yeah. They'll, they'll get to the point where like williams advanced engineering they realize they've got so much good technology that they decided to make that a legitimate stream and you know mclaren applied technology as well Obviously. maybe that's maybe maybe the future is is the cartels going hang on there's good money to be made in all this technology that we've developed <laughs> to smuggle our drugs why don't we start an f1 team it would be the best way to launder money you could I mean, just it, be like it's oh yes yeah, already happened doesn't it it's a nut which is Fifteen thousand pounds. Yes. Well, I would be. I'd be interested that. to know, like, when, like, if you're if you're working in, like, where's the next race? Monaco, right? Mm-hmm. If you're working in like Nice Customs, and you know, four hundred trucks of Formula One come through, and everyone's all grumpy because they're like, we got free prices on a Thursday because it's Monaco. Let us through. Are they searching everything? Are they searching? Inside the Formula One cars for Coke, there it they is. are now. But I, I bet in the eighties they were. If there wasn't a ton of coke around F one of the eighties, then I'll be a monkey's uncle. I think yeah, but they would have just waved it through, wouldn't they? Let's think. But every team that pre qualified was actually Monica. just drug smuggling. It was just a mule. <laughs> They're like, yeah, we didn't qualify for the race, but we've just made six million. <laughs> Why do you think they called development cars test mules? <gasps> we've blown this thing wide open. Jesus. I think we. Should. We haven't answered the question, but I think we have exposed the entire Formula One industry. The answer to the question, Tristan, is yes. Yep. Unless Great. they can figure out what's wrong with their wind tunnel and error model. Mm-hmm. Phil? Uh, I'm going to pick Ryan Simpson, who says, Why for why we not got poor men anymore? So these are the kind of questions I like. I understand. Yeah, it's a callback, but it works well. But, yeah, I mean, we did touch on it in the main episode um, post whatever the last race was, Imola, um, that they, they, well, Fred Fasseur seems to be the answer, is why for why we not got Bourne anymore, is that he's he's bought a, a, a classic French touch. I mean, it is. Because the, the thing with Ford of One is they the always French, say... The French are famous for their reliability. I was sorry. about to say, <laughs> I've owned I a few French that, cars, yeah. yeah. <laughs> they fall to bits. But you know when sometimes Formula One, mm. it has this kind of weird, like... um. There's these rules in Formula One, which is like, you know, oh, things don't happen quickly. So, you know, actually, you know. Is that a rule? I mean, I don't mean in the, the cars happen quickly yeah, around the track. But I mean, you know, they, the, when someone takes over, well, there's a new team. It's like, oh, the oh cultures no, it's gonna, takes, it takes The cars change quickly, but the cultures. It takes three to five years to, you know, blah, 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 you know, to 
not be shit to, to not be shit you know you've got to be quick and then Freddie Vaseline comes in and it seems like within 20 minutes he sorted everything out of Ferrari and I don't understand like was it was it so bad there that it just took someone to be like what the fuck are you doing like <laughs> the fuck are you playing at and they're just like jerking off over the cars or something for a I don't know what it is just... stop it no stop it stop it I'll rub your face in it I'll rub your face in it no <laughs> no I mean he's Freddie Vaseline he's just come in and lubricated the whole operation there you go maybe it's that's loose in the name I do genuinely we, well, we did speak about it in the last episode I do genuinely think that's what's happened he's just done all the like the little bits I reckon I reckon the whole like garage was just an, a complete fucking mess even like the back office it was the filing cabinet was a shit show like it was just a complete mess no one could find the fucking key for the for the filing drawer all the important stuff and it was things like that no one was checking out the keys properly for the pool cars it was all that kind of stuff and he's just ironed that out and now everything just works somehow oh he's doing very well long may it continue because yeah. he's only been there when did he start yesterday or do you think talking of elves do you think it is just like some teams there has to be two teams that are like infected with elves that sounds racist isn't it that, um, infected with elves <laughs> goblins goblins elf. goblin know. elves Renault elf um, hey because oh, yeah. it, it feels that like Williams are just starting to sort their shit out. Ferrari have sorted their shit out. And like Alpine and Mercedes and Aston Martin are going, and going, it's our turn for the elves. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, they're just roaming around the factories of Europe. <laughs> going, oh, ho, 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 ho. You know shit, how, it's the fucking you, elves. You know how in the team, though, they've got like a Pirelli engineer yeah. that has to be in the team. Embedded but, with them, yeah. But he's embedded, but he's not a team employee and he can't, and they have to kind of keep secrets from them, each other. Oh, you know, they can kind of be like, you can't see that. So I reckon there's just a bunch of elves in the pit stops, but they're too small. They don't, they don't, they don't pick up on the cameras. Yeah. There's like <laughs> four really... of them on top of each other wearing a rubber mask. <laughs> I don't know what it is. He's in the Alpine team and just before the car goes out, he just like undoes something. <laughs> <laughs> you just hear this little sort of... <laughs> <laughs> Oh. I think uh, I think you're onto something. <clears throat> We're getting through a lot of reality question. today. This is great. Oh yeah, it's great. <laughs> Terry, uh, do you want to go for a question? Um, oh, is it your go? I've forgotten now. I think no, it is I me. think yeah. No, because I, I just did why for why we not got boom. Oh, you did, did you? Yeah. Okay. Great. J C Tollit says, should they let Vettel race in Senna's McLaren? I'd like to see that. Mm. I wouldn't. I like think to see that. I think Vettel kind of misses misses racing. To be honest. I think I think he's sort of I think he's like um like that meme of Escobar from Narcos just <laughs> kicking around the place just going I'm really bored and the, yeah, the chance of Imola to get into Senna's car and zoom around the only downside would be is if he has a horrible crash in it that Is he like be... the go-to vintage F1 car race uh, driver cuz he he's well, got a big collection yeah, cuz yeah. that, that was his own car and he's got Mansell's old FW4 the Williams, yeah. as well and like, and, and he's going. Does anyone want to buy one of Sebastian Vettel's winning cars? And everyone's like, Nah, not really, mate. <laughs> he's he's retired from F one, so he can spend more time driving F one cars and I still just... travelling the world. <laughs> the thing with Vettel is that he keeps buying these cars from old world champions that are lauded, and yet he's. Am I being harsh here? Probably. He's not remembered as one of the greats. He, he won't be. He was a four-time champion that I think we all feel like he kind of slightly lucked into. He was and a very then, solid driver that got solid. in a very good car at the right time. And then looked quite shit It is two post-Red Bull teams, yes. to be fair. I think he won a, race with, won a couple of races with Ferrari, didn't he? Yeah, but that anyone can do. Carlos Sainz has won a couple of races with Ferrari. Yeah, do you compare him to Ayrton Senna? No, I mean, I don't think Vettel's any Verstappen, let's put it that way. I don't think he's even a Ricardo. I think he's better than Ricardo. He's better yeah. than Ricardo. Ricardo beat him though. That's why he left Red Bull. So yeah, but that was old Ricardo. Something happened to Ricardo where he where he just f- he's forgotten elves. how to drive. <laughs> it's the elves. <laughs> My God. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, it's the elves. Um, all right, uh, let's go. For, let's go for a long question. Here we go. <clears throat> Alan Cornish. Okay, why do people keep calling Imola a great track? 
It's always been horrific for racing. I know this because the memory of sitting down in 1994 to watch what I assumed would be yet another boring race still burns in my mind. It's not even because of the Texan-sized F1 cars. It was shit with small early 90s cars too. Oh, the Lando bit at the end? Talk about overhyping. Even if he got close, he couldn't have passed Max. Honestly, like Monaco, it's one I'm glad when it's out of the way. We've kind of talked about this a bit already. We have. I mean, the the size of the cars is an interesting thing. <clears throat> I think the one difference now is DRS because there was a little bit of going past people with DRS, and obviously that is that is a sticking plaster on a much bigger issue. But it did mean that there was you like I, I think with the Lando thing particularly. Like I think if he'd have caught him and he was catching him quite quickly up until the last couple of laps, I think he probably would have got past him with DRS fairly easily. Mm. But generally, yeah, yeah. Uh, we've talked about it already. Yeah, I mean, the thing with Imola is it look. It, it's a bit like Hockenheim in that it looks very nineties. Mm. Like when you see it with all the big trees everywhere and all the rest of it, it's a bit like Monza. It looks like a kind of old school track, and, and therefore you're lulled into this sense of security that therefore it's going to be great because things were better in the old days, etc., etc., etc. We forget Except that tracks were it, shits back in the day as well. So much Formula One was so boring for a long time, and we forget that we nostalgia nostalgifies. You were using it. Nostalgialize? <laughs> Nostalgialize-ifies. Nostalgialize. Um, we nostalgia, we we nostalgia ball, ball, uh the nineties, and most of it was shit. No, the nineties were good. <laughs> the nineties was a good, a the great. The nineties were good, weren't they? I mean, it's a while ago. Maybe I've forgotten. Everyone smoked. There was no Wi-Fi. Well, no, yeah. no but we great. started getting the internet to the tail end. Then we had we had CDs, and then we had tape CDs, had then mini discs, and then MP3 oh. came out. And you were like, oh, fuck, oh, I just spent oh, 100 quid on a mini display. I oh, did exactly that. Yeah. If this clip goes on TikTok, and some, we're, we're not helping our image of being three <laughs> old white men talking about the old days. <laughs> the 90s were awesome, kids, uh, the kids, they're not, The kids love the 90s these days. They'll be well jealous of my Mel C mini yeah, disc you, album. Exactly. Have you there seen the trousers they wear? There were two Iraq walls and Chris Evans. Come on. <laughs> I watched some old TFI Friday and Don't Forget Your Tuss Brush a couple of months ago because I was bored. <laughs> and it's really bad. Like, <laughs> what we think of as lad culture in the 90s, when you watch it back, it's it's uncomfortable. TFI Friday is uncomfortable to well, watch. Cause you, I've still got some copies of Loaded in FHM in the loft somewhere. I think. No, That's exactly. To they, think they, what they yeah. look like. Now. As in no. offensive uncomfortable. Yeah, just the way, like really just demeaning talk that, that you, you know, like I guess in the 70s where things, there's a lot more kind of racist stuff that you watch some old episode of a sitcom and you're like, bloody hell, <laughs> fucking hell, they can't do that anymore. <laughs> and the 90s is a sexist equivalent. You're just like, Jesus Christ. We just hated women in the 90s, says three old men on a podcast. Yeah. <laughs> I didn't hate women in the 90s. Uh, <laughs> oh, right. sorry, I didn't realise you were talking about all of culture. <laughs> uh, Phil? Um, just looking through the... Most of the questions are about how shit Imola is. <laughs> um, oh, fucking hell, genuinely, they all are about how shit... Uh, what about Alfie Wilkes? <clears throat> What? I'm not going to read that one. I'm going to go instead with... We might get to that one, in which case you'll understand why I don't want to read it. But the next one I want to do uh, is from alexander.dill.7161. Hmm. What is the latest episode in Terry's diary? We've not checked in with Terry's diary for a while. Oh. Are you still doing your diary now? Because you're quite well, happy these days, aren't you? Yeah, the problem is I'm not really doing a diary anymore because if for exactly that reason, I'm slightly happy. Um, so basically, the long and the short of it is my previous relationship with I can't remember how much detail I actually went into in the podcast, but it was it was involving Nigel Mansell and Nelson PK. And it's it 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 caused a lot of anxiety, shall we say, which meant I wrote in my diary a lot about how th things felt great but they obviously weren't. And now we're in a relationship where there's no real anxiety. There's no Nelson PK, there's no Nigel Mansell. It's just me and um Turkey in a way. I'm with I'm Christian Dammer. <laughs> No, no, I mean, a good job. No, don't, don't make out that my partner's a, a midfield driver. Oh, sorry. Um, Nicky Lauder? Uh, better he is. Um, <laughs> Montoya. She's also he, wasn't a, so he wasn't a champion. Well, he's not a champion. No. Jacques Villeneuve. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. Did she listen trouble. to the podcast? 
hope you've not listened to this one. <laughs> I have a feeling the diary is going to make a return in the coming weeks. <laughs> Just the trouble, con- contentment is the enemy of creativity. It's the problem. Exactly, I have not been very creative. If you're happy, but... everything's shite. Which is why the podcast has been so great lately. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> yeah. no I think so, it's all right. So, the long and short of it, dear loyal fans, I'm quite happy. And I'm sorry, it, it means that it's less entertaining because there's... I, I don't have all those adventures anymore. Well, that was there's still time. Oh, I mean, we're already in May. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> We've got until Christmas. Terry, pick us a question. Okay, I'll read the question that Phil refused to read. We'll make it the is, last one. Shall we? Okay, yeah, because yeah, all the other questions seem quite similar. Don't they? Alfie Wilkes, 22, says, Would you rather drink a pint from Marco's asshole or wear Horner's pants like a COVID mask for a day? For a day? <laughs> Fucking hell. Yeah. I mean, a pint of what? Do you mean extract a pint of something from his arsehole? Or do you mean like an enema, like have a pint of something passing through his arsehole? Yeah, from his arsehole. Because if if his arsehole can hold a pint, that's a big arsehole. He is a big arsehole. (laughs) But because I'm thinking, look. Well, I mean, intestines are pretty long. Yeah. But if you if you said to me. Ollie, if you gave me a pint of brownish liquid and said, this is from my arsehole, I'd yeah. be like, I don't want to drink that. Not again, Ollie. <laughs> stop it. Stop, stop, stop it. it. <laughs> I had to pay customs on this. <laughs> and then, but if you then like got, say, an enema mm. and pulled the water in and shot it back out, it would still be disgusting, but I think remarkably less disgusting. I mean, I'm going for the pants, I think. Yeah. It'd last for longer, but it'd be much less minging. I also think it's Christian probably got quite expensive pants as well. So. And I, I reckon Christian Horner smells quite nice. Yeah, it probably just smells a little bit like a a, a gym locker room rather I mean, than. I think, I think he's he, you know he's he's having it off so often he probably changes his pants very regularly so it'd be pretty flesh, flesh, fresh, Ugh. Ugh. or flesh. I don't know. Depends what he's been doing. Yes, I'd go for the pants. Terry's face. face has gone very serious, which suggests he's giving this a lot of thought. <laughs> Look, I'm. He's asking AI. <laughs> What, I'm, what we should do? He's writing his diary. <laughs> What's going on? I don't know. No, I'm, I'm thinking. I'm, no, okay. I'm seriously sorry. I know it's not good for the podcast, but I'm seriously thinking about this because okay. yeah. the thing is, I okay. Let, let's take away for a second the asshole pants drink thing. Let's just look at. Let's just look at the pair of them. And I'm going to go by how I uh, how I presume they smell because I've not been near either of them in real life. Yeah, I've got a feeling Horner. You know, he's married to a Spice Girl. He's probably got very expensive stuff. He, he showers a lot. We, we know from his leaked messages that he showers a lot. Uh, <laughs> I think he's going to smell quite nice. And I think his pants are going to be, you know, at best musty. I've, t- Whereas, I've, I've talked to Horner and I don't recall him being stinky. There you go. Yeah. Whereas Helmut Marco, just, I, I get the impression there's, I mean, I think I think there's going to be a, a smell emanating from every. He looks like the kind of person that you know, showers once a week. And also, it's an asshole, which you know they're just inherently stinky. That is just how they are because they're assholes. So yeah, there's no there's no stipulation in the question about how you wear the pants. No, other than like a COVID mask, because it could mean based on my memories of COVID, you could just have it under your chin and nobody would really give a shit. Yeah. Okay. Good. Great. Hope that answered your question, okay. Alfie. Well, look, thanks for your questions. Coming up after the ad break, it's Phil Trayman's Grand Prix preview. Stick around for that. Uh, remember, you can listen ad-free at our subscription pub thing, The Whinging Moustache. You can just sign up through Apple Podcasts, head to our page, and you'll see a link to join. Or you can just say thanks for all the free stuff by donating a one-off pint or three to us at ff1s.com forward slash pint, pint, pint. And now, from one legendary but boring track to another, it's time for the FF1S Grand Prix Preview with Phil Tromans. Ooh. Ooh. Bonjour tout le monde et bienvenue à Mon Calo pour le Formula 1 Grand Prix de Monaco 2024. It's a festival of incredible driving feats and rich people in stupid trousers at one of the longest running motorsport events in the world. To be successful at the Monaco Grand Prix, you have to be at one with your car, marrying speed and precision at a wedding of concentration and talent, because the Monegasque walls await like divorce lawyers made of concrete and advertising. Just one word of warning, the race is almost always dull as fuck. 
The Monaco Grand Prix predates Formula One by 21 years. It was first run around the streets of Monte Carlo in 1929, when the winning car was a Bugatti T35B that was 3.7 metres long and 1.3 metres wide. The cars on the 2024 grid are nearly 6 metres long and 2 metres wide. Small wonder then that it's just about impossible to overtake anywhere on the 3.337 km Circuit de Monaco. Any changes of position are normally done in the pits or when somebody stacks it into a wall. For that reason, Sunday's race is another best left on in the background while you have a nap or get odd jobs done around the house. The time to watch is on Saturday because qualifying is ace. For all we shit on Monaco, and it's basically our toilet at this point, watching 1,000 horsepower F1 cars being flung around a track designed almost 100 years ago for much smaller cars is brilliant. When the drivers are striving for a grid spot, which is more important here than at any other race, they're giving it everything, and it's mesmerising to watch. Monaco qualifying is one of the best days in the F1 season. The Monaco race is one of the worst. The current race lap record at Monaco is 1 minute 12.909 seconds, set by Lewis Hamilton of Mercedes in 2021. Last year's race, you'll be astounded to hear, was won by Max Verstappen, and he's probably favourite to win this year's race too, but with McLaren on the rise, who knows? It'll be whoever gets pole as long as they don't bin it or fuck up the stops. Bill Fact! The first winner of the Monaco Grand Prix was Williams! Not the team, but William Grover Williams, a British driver of some note who also won the Belgian Grand Prix and the French Grand Prix twice during his career. He later went on to work as a secret agent for Britain during World War II. As a special operations executive agent parachuted in behind enemy lines to work with the French resistance, he created and led a sleeper cell network of resistance agents to fuck over the Nazis. It all went well until he was captured in 1943 and executed at the Sachsenhausen concentration camp two years later. Mm. Suddenly, a potential race ban doesn't seem like such a hardship, does it, Kevin? <laughs> Are you saying that Kevin... Hang on. What, what, let's take this to its logical conclusion. Is Kevin a, a Nazi? <laughs> <laughs> I'm just saying that Kevin Magnuson's bitching that he might get a race ban. Well, at least you're not going to get fucking shot, Kevin. Yeah. That guy, though, what a, what a life. I mean, terrible ending. But, but that's cool, isn't it? Hey, did all right. A driver, and then a spy, and then that's just my understanding. That was just standard, standard upper class life in the early twentieth century. Did get Drive me wondering cars, something though. Can I can I just tap your expertise? Sorry, because this is a, a genuine question, which might sound slightly idiotic, but I do wonder about it. Probably the answer is going to be money. But okay, the track is difficult to overtake because the cars are fucking massive, right? Why, 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 for a particular race, can they not just make a smaller car? Money. Money. But how that would be cool, though, right? Wouldn't it? Like, yeah, if they I could... think we've I think we've talked about this before. Actually, didn't we talk about this in previous years about having a Monaco special that's just completely different to all the other? A completely different car for this race. I'd be yeah. well up for that. I think it's a great idea. And I, I'm I sure we've talked be about it before. Yeah, because I think we sh- specials for. Um... Lots of different races. Like if you could, because if you could do that, then you could do a Monza special, which yeah, no you know, downforce. Because one of the one of the good and bad things about Formula One is that the car has to do everything. Everything, yeah. The has car got to be an all rounder. That's the whole. He's got to be able yeah. to do every race, and that means there's compromise, which is an engineering problem, I guess. You know, you've got to be able to because what because what is it? Because it's the the hairpin at Monaco is the tightest corner in the in the mm. calendar. So I think for the, all the other races, the, the steering the steering lock is designed for Monaco. And yeah. If you didn't have to do that, you could you could change so many other things on the car. But that's it. So in one way, I quite like that. But in the other way, oh, I'd fucking love it if they just went here's the Monaco car and it's just like a fucking truck or something. Like it's got big bumpers all the way around. I, it, I so think you can it would crash be, into the I think it would be and, really. I'd like be like a go kart basically. It'd be really tiny. It'd be amazing. Yeah. Or it would be. Like a qualifying special, and then be really wide so that nobody could get past. It'd be even wider. <laughs> nice. Or <laughs> well, the movable aero would just be like putting out wings so nobody can get past. I, I just think I think it'd be just a really interesting idea. I, I agree. Go. Well, that's it from us. We'll be back next week when we'll be looking back at the snooze fest that the Monaco Grand Prix will almost definitely be. In the meantime, check out our Facebook page, facebook.com forward slash for F1's sake. Does anyone go on that? And follow us on Twitter at for F1's sake and TikTok at the same handle. We'd also love it if you subscribe to our YouTube channel where you can see as well as hear us if that's the kind of thing that you might like. Watching already? This is just for you. (laughs) That's good. I like it. Oh, Oh, it's excellent. That's, that's worse. No. Like, oh. like, and subscribe, and whack that bell icon. What? What? Oh, sorry, no, I was doing not, that not already. Not that, Terry. <laughs>
<laughs> okay. That's not what we meant. Let me just change cameras. <laughs> but Terry, where can people buy merchandise? This is way too much. It's like shop, shop, shop. <laughs> <laughs> you just made some merchandise. Thanks for listening. I've been Ollie Peer. Goodbye. Goodbye. Bye. 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 <laughs> Boy lover. <laughs>